the global collective of men's they're failing and flailing. This article comes out of The Economist Japan. This one says, Japanese men are having an identity crisis. In Japan, women are empowered. Men don't know what they are. Lord, <laughs> this could probably be written for just about any country right now where women are doing well. Fukushima Mishi, Mishihito wanted to marry his girlfriend, but a decade ago he fell ill had to stop working and consequently broke up with her. I thought if I can't support my family, I shouldn't get married, he recalls. He later realized that many Japanese men are similarly weighed down by pressure to fill the traditional male role. He now runs a men's hotline in the city of Osaka, which encourages men to discuss their anxieties. In Japan, relations between men and women are shifting as marriage rates decline and more women enter the workforce. But the idea that men are breadwinners remains deeply entrenched. In 2022, only 17% of eligible men took paternal leave, I'm sorry, parental leave, compared with 80% of women. Japanese women spend five times longer doing chores than men. A survey in 2022 by Lean In Tokyo, an activist group suggested that over 60% of Japanese men feel awkward at work because of pressure to behave in a manly way. In Japan, which has the highest self-deletion rate in the G7, men are twice as likely to self-delete as women. The hotline Mr. Fukushima helps run was established in 1995. It was founded mainly in an effort to reduce DV by giving anxious men an opportunity to air their grievances to a discreet stranger. Since then, the hotline has received calls on an expanding range of concerns, including relationships, SE actuality, and work. More men are growing tired of behaving in a manly fashion and want to be free, says Mr. Fukushima. The government has also taken an interest in the problem. In 2010, it included an objective to promote men's counseling in its gender equality plan. There are now over 80 counseling centers offering this service. Japan's archetypal gender roles, the salary man, husband, and stay-at-home mom, were cemented during the country's long post-war boom. Following the oil crisis of the early 70s, those rigid roles began to break down in many Western countries as more and more women entered work in response to e economic stagnation and labor shortages. By contrast, Japan tried to overcome the crisis by extending men's working hours, then by inflating the great bubble economy of the 1980s. While Western countries went through a transition point in gender relations, says Tanaka Toshiyuki, a sociologist, J Japan missed the opportunity to change. Since the 1990s, as fears about the slumping birth rate increased and more Japanese women entered the workforce, Calls for men to participate in domestic work have grown. I told y'all this could sound just about like just about any country. In 2010, the government tried to promote the concept of ikumin, EQ men, which combines ikig, child rearing, and ikimen, cool men. But culture is slow to change at many countries, in part due to gerontocratic male management. Sounds like old men management. The great extent to which Japanese men are encouraged to commit themselves to work is another barrier to change. Retired workaholic men are described as nurichi chi, I don't know, sorry y'all, or wet leaf because lacking hobbies or friends, they follow their wives around like a wet leaf stuck to a shoe. <laughs> I wish, hold on. Nurio Chi, yeah, I'm sorry. I really wanted to try to say that word. A Staple Magazine article offers advice to wives suffering from a severe case of retired husband syndrome. For men, the pain of being considered a nuisance by their lifelong spouse can be immense. Mr. Fukushima laments that so many men sacrifice themselves for work to provide for their family, only to realize later in life that they do not belong at home. Mr. Fukushima, who describes men's tendencies to assert their dominance as the armor of masculinity, hopes more men will feel able to show weakness. 
that it that is still not easy, he says. Some men who call the hotline quickly become aggressive, probably to hide their sense of humiliation. As for Mr. Fukushima himself, when asked what he would do if he had his choice of proposing to or breaking up with his girlfriend again, he says he would probably still take the second course. Even if I'm fine with the idea of being a disempowered husband, the question is, what would she think? What would people around us think, he says. Here are a couple of short clips that I found from TikTok on Japan and its population problem. Japan is facing a population growth problem. The country's population is shrinking and aging at a rapid rate. There are fewer babies being born and people are living longer, which means that there are few young workers to support the elderly population. However, no one can pinpoint to the reasons why this is happening. The declining population also leads to a decreased workforce and a shortage of skilled workers in various sectors. To address this issue, the Japanese government has implemented policies to encourage childbirth and support Support working parent. In recent years, they have also relaxed immigration rules to attract foreign workers. However, the damage may already be done. Reversing years of population decline requires very detailed strategies, improving work life balances, providing better childcare options, and also promoting long term economic growth. Whether Japan can actually reverse this remains to be seen. Japan is no longer the world's third largest economy. What does it mean for Japan? If you talk about just the population, the Japanese population has been declining since 2010. According to the data from the World Bank, it shows that 2010 was the peak year, with the population around 128 million. And in the year 2022, it was around 125 million. The rate of decline is in fact actually very steep. If you look at the graph, especially after the year 2020. The birth rate is really low. I mean, in order to sustain the population growth, the replacement fertility rate has to be on average 2.1, assuming that there's no immigration or emigration occurs. So in the year 2023, the Japan fertility rate is 1.26, which is extremely low and far from 2.1. Japan used to be one of the strongest country in Asia in terms of the economy, especially after the post-war period. Now it's declining. So according to the Japanese Prime Minister, a last chance for us to reverse the declining birth is before the young population is expected to decline drastically in year 2030, which is only six years from now. I mean, the reasons behind this, some of the reasons are actually high cost of living with slow wage increment, typical Japanese corporate culture, poor job prospect, and of course there are many other reasons. So what do you think about low birth rate in Japan? 